my position is referred to as an interpreter of history, which doesn't mean I'm translating a foreign language. It means I'm bringing the past to people who live in the present. Um, one of the things um, that we try to do here at Prickett's Fort is uh, get our, our visitors involved. Does that look like that other doodad I was using? The spindle and mm -hmm. that disc, the whorl as we I call this. It. it looks almost the same, doesn't it? Good girl. Now this string is not what we're making, okay? It's like the belts under the hood of your vehicle. It just moves the motion from here to here. Now here's where we're gonna make something new. Are you ready for that? When I was a very little girl, uh, I wanted to do some things for myself. I wanted to grow my own food and make my own clothes. So you can see all the mud is gone, but these things will come out when we do the picking and the teasing. Be woven into a blanket instead of fine wool thread for a garment cloth. If we don't know, um, if we don't know where we've come from, we don't really know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, we don't really know where we're going. And so I think that history is not to be relived. You know, I don't, I'm not saying go back to the old ways necessarily. If you want to, okay. But I'm not saying everybody should. But if, um, for instance, the friendliness in West Virginia and um, the helpful way people are with complete strangers, that goes back to this 18th century history where this frontier was so isolated from the rest of the world. And if these families, miles apart from one another, didn't help each other, they were all going to die. So that influenced the culture of this area. And there's still some of it left. It's slowly disappearing <laughs> as modernity takes over. <laughs> <laughs>